So I have a few principles when it comes to doing troubleshooting. You either start at the beginning, start at the end, or start in the middle. I'm starting in the middle. We've already verified the power supplies appear to be okay. I say I've already done some work on those, recapped them, that sort of stuff. So I'm confident the power supplies are good. The error I'm getting is at fail two, which is an over voltage thing. Now when we're doing normal testing on this, and it only comes up in the high voltage settings, if I do a self test as well. But if I'm doing low voltage stuff, which is like below 100 volts, in like the 10 volt scale and downwards, then I'm just getting a voltage error on both DC and AC, as we saw. If you think about this, the offset of the voltage being 6% higher, whatever it is, that could potentially trigger the over voltage error in the higher ranges, because it is over voltage. So if I ignore that high voltage stuff for now, and I'll just concentrate on getting the DC working, right? So let's look at the DC side, figure out what's going on with that because that might resolve everything because the DC is also used to help generate the AC stuff they use in conjunction. So if I ignore the AC, ignore the high voltage, come down to DC. Now as you can see I've got this hooked up to a couple of test points on this board here which is on the output control board, the orange one. I'm hooked up to test point 2 and test point 3. These are the inputs to the 1 volt attenuator. So its base voltage range is 10 volts, right? That's its base voltage as it references everything. It either boosts it or drops it from that point. So at the input to the one volt attenuator, it's 10 volts coming in. And we can see what's going on there. That's its base voltage. We can see whether that voltage looks correct or not. And spoiler alert, I've already checked this. So let's power this up. Let's turn it onto positive DC. And because we've got zero volts coming out. So this meter here is testing the test point and this is testing the output you notice some similarities here test point output the same numbers just divided by 10 so if I go up to the 10 volt range now they are exactly the same numbers so if I go to full scale so that's 10 volts exactly the same numbers again so what we're getting here is the input to the attenuator section is wrong and that is just passing through the whole system because I was thinking it can't be a calibration error like a calibration failure like all the cable points have been lost because it's consistent across every single range because what range I'm doing it's the same ratio of error see as I drop the ranges down it's always the same because we got in exactly the same thing across all the ranges it means it's a voltage problem and you can see on this particular range on a 10 millivolt range we're getting 20 millivolts output, and this is wrong. If I go to zero scale, I can't get it down there. So that's definitely wrong. Let's do one millivolt. Same deal, one millivolt, can't get it down there. We're getting one volt on the test point, and 12 millivolts down there. So we can't actually get that drop off, so the voltage is not nulling out like it should be. Right, go back to zero, it's just not nulling, because this, voltage shouldn't be there. If I reverse to a negative voltage we get the exact opposite. So the nulling point is not there. So something's dragging it off. Something's pulling the voltage up a little bit and that's what we've got to try and find. So I seem to have found a problem. It's not the problem I was expecting to find. Now I just pulled the reference board out and I swapped over two ICs just to see if there's a potential thing which will change this voltage here. It's in the uh, summing amplifier section, there's two summing amplifiers that are coarse and a fine and it's using the same IC so I thought I'd swap those over because that would at least show if one of those ICs are bad anyway it didn't do that but what did happen it went up to 1.5 volts on here I thought that's weird after I put it back to how it was originally what I found if I wiggle this ball around it's uh, jumping around a little bit there's something going on here with this ball where there's obviously a bad connection somewhere now, I don't think it's on the logic board, on the main motherboard, because if I push somewhere else to move that board around, nothing happens. It's only this board here. If I'm flexing it slightly, I haven't figured out exactly where it is, but there's definitely a connection problem there. So I might have to go around and resolder all the joints on this board. Yeah, that ain't right. And if I demonstrate the same thing on AC volts as well, it's the same setting. See, it jumps up to over 2 volts. So there's definitely something going on here. It's not from touching the shields, it's not from that. So I don't know, there must be a bad connection on this board. Hmm, at least we found something. Right, I've put the card back in, let's power it up together for the first time and we'll see if I've made it worse or better or potentially shorted out some pads. Uh, I hope not. Oh. 
go on DC. Zero volts is 17 millivolts. Right, let's do full scale. One volt, 1.5 volts. Fault has not gone away. But look at that. When I push it over, I don't get exactly one volt. Ooh. Do you know what? I've done something right because that is what the output's supposed to be. One volt. Ten volts. Oh, look at that. Okay, I'm on the right track. Bad joints on that board. But there's also still something somewhere which isn't right. I'm not sure which end of the board it's at. Doesn't seem to be this end. Or the middle. If I hold the middle where it is. Move this end around. It's at this end of the board. Or it's a slot. So I push it over and then wiggle it. Still playing up. So something at this end of the board has still got a bad joint. But look at that. That's looking really good actually. 100 volts. 100 volts still isn't working but yeah, that's alright. I'll get there. First thing is get this bit working. 100 millivolts. We'll get there. Ten millivolts. That's right, that's the first time I've seen it right. One millivolt. Yes. Hundred microvolts. Yes. Oh progress. So I still the same thing with AC as well. Let's pull the board over in this corner. There we go. One volt AC. 10 volts, yep that's there, 100 volts, I'll be surprised, nah, okay, and it also turns the output off at that volt, I say no, oh no look, I'm getting 92 volts, oh it's doing something, cool, so 10 volts, yep, one, yes, millivolts, yes. Oh, this is looking really promising. 10 millivolts. 1 millivolt. Yeah, you know, you know better media for this. But that is definitely a big improvement. I didn't have that before, did I? 100 volts again. Turn the apple back on. Ninety volts is wrong. And if I move the board around, it comes and goes a bit. So, yep, yeah, okay. Try to do a thousand. Mm. Let's try 500. No. So, the high voltage isn't there, but that's okay. Let's do DC again. Put it back on DC. Turn the output on. So 5 volts, that's fine. Let's try 50. See, DC voltage isn't there. But the AC was, which is a good sign, actually. Okay, that's fine. Negative DC. Negative DC is there. Oh, we're getting closer. If I move the board, yes, yeah, see how it breaks. Right, okay. Let's try 500 volts. Negative. getting 32 okay well you know that fault's still there but we got somewhere so we'll get this board fixed you know it gets so much closer all right so i've resoldered about a third of that reference card just this end of it it's only about a third of it so let's see if that's fixed the problem or not i don't want to do any more than i need to do it could be multiple joints across this board i did find joints which looked bad and i fixed resoldered them obviously there's joints there which weren't obvious to see because i didn't expect the whole board anyway i'm on a third of it we'll see how that goes I'm going to power it up now, first time, we'll see if it gets any smoke because I've shorted something out or something, done something stupid, or if it works. So, turn the power on, come over here, turn the output on, we are getting zero, full voltage, 
We're getting full voltage. A little bit of cold around. Oh, look at that. We've got it. There we go. That's working. Excellent. So, let's go 10 volts. It's obviously one of the joints are solved in that third section and it has solved the problem. Got 10 volts is working. Great. Let's try to invert that. So, you've got minus 10 volts. That's working. Let's do 100 volts. Got 100 volts, excellent. Positive 100 volts, uh, positive 100 volts doesn't work, which is curious because it uses the same relays for polarity. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. So minus 100 volts working, but positive 100 volts is not working. That's a bit odd. We're getting there anyway. So we've got one of the high voltage circuits working, so the amplifier is obviously working for this one. Go zero, we're getting zero. The polarity changeover is done on the reference board. So there's relays on there which do that. So the, the reference is actually what changes the polarity around at low voltages. Well, kind of. It also does the 100 volt range. So if it's working in low voltages, it should also work at 100 volts, but obviously it's not. The other thing is on the 1000 volt range, which we'll try in a second, that has its own polarity changeover relay on that board. Well, in that section, I don't know exactly what it is, you haven't found it. But that also swaps over polarity, but it's, so it's got two polarity changeover relays, depending on which circuit you're using. So, you know, let's try a 1000 volt range. This will turn off. We go positive first. The mass 32 volts. It's got an inverse voltage and it's constant 32 volts. So, there's a clue there about what's going on. I don't know what it is yet. I haven't looked into any of that circuitry yet. My basis was to get the basic low voltage stuff working first and then work my way up. And then once I've got the voltages working properly on the DC side, I was going to do the AC side. And I didn't have to do anything with the calibrations, because I'm hoping that the calibration constants in here are still pretty good. So trying to do a calibration, it was the last thing I wanted to do. And I didn't want to be messing with any existing calibration constants. So 1 volt, that's perfect. 10 volts, as we already saw. Okay, so that sort of positive voltage is up to that point. And then 100 volts, was it working? So negative again, negative 100 is working, negative 10 is working, negative 1, negative 100, negative 10, negative 1, yep, and negative 100 micro is there. So those, all those positive negative voltage up to 10 volts are working, negative 100 is working, positive 100 is not, which is interesting. That's very interesting. So I think there might be an amplifier problem. I'll have to figure out that part in more detail. The first is bipolar and unipolar DC. So bipolar DC is used all the way up to 100 volt range. And unipolar DC is used on a 1000 volt range because it's converted to AC and high voltage waveforms and stuff like that. So we're very close to getting it working. So that's great. That's good. So the AC is working up to that point, which is a good thing because it means, because it's got kind of shared parts with the DC. Some of the DC is used with the AC. So it's not unsurprising, but if I did have any particular faults on the AC range, at least give me a clue where to look. So let's try 100 volts. That was turned off. We'll turn it back on again. And we're getting 92, which is interesting. So 92. Let's change frequency. 95. So it's quite a big difference between this and this in that range, so there's probably a problem there in the high voltage range. Let's go up to 190. See, so 173, that's a big difference there. So there's definitely something going on there. So this is the basic block diagram of the whole DC side of it. Now this is in the manual which I do have, which is volume 1 only of the 4700 service manual. I want volume 2 because that's got the diagrams in it. The only diagrams I've got aren't very good and they're from the 4708, which is one which is available online. It's the only one there is. If you happen to have volume 2, I'm quite happy to buy the manual. I really could use it. I like to have manuals for all my test gear. So this is the basic thing. So DC current, I've not even looked at that yet. I'm not going to worry about current until I've got everything else working properly. That's going to be the last thing I look at. DC low voltage is the section I've been working on so far. As you saw, I've got this working now. Now it's got some paths it changes to depending on which voltage range you set to. So on the paths over here, 
you see you've got a switching between less than 1 volt, greater than 10 volts in this section. So if it's uh, 1 volt range or less, it will come straight through basically. If it's 10 volt range, your switches come through up here and then it will come back down again. If it's only 10 volt range, it will come up, back down to 10 volts, back down, back through here. Okay, it jumps over to the power amplifier board and it comes back. That's what it does, all right? So the 10 volt range is working, so I know the connection to the power amplifier board is working and it's coming back and that's all working and the power actually switching and stuff like that in that section is working okay, which is important. The 100 volt range, as you saw, was only working on the negative voltages, which is curious and I'll explain why. The polarity switching is done on this board before it goes to amplifier. At least that's what I've read. I'll explain anyway. So 100 volt range, so it's got, because it's greater than 10 volts, it comes up here, goes through this section. So it's got switching up here for 1000 volts or 100 volts. And on a 100 volt range, it comes through this, this uh, feeds this error buffer, which is divided by two buffer, passes through, and if you say 10 volt, it comes back, or 100 volts, it goes this way. So 100 volts goes that way and then through this amplifier and the 1000 volts I'll explain that one too while I'm here it comes around through this 1 kilovolt range polarizer because it's bipolar DC plus and minus 10 volts for example or 100 volts and then it in here it's only plus 1000 volts it comes through here it, it fixes the polarity in this direction so that comes through here then it goes through the air buffer and then it will switch here as well, right? So this is what is the two paths it does for: 100 volt path, 1000 volt path. Think of it that way. Well, 100 volt and 10 volt path. That then comes through. I said 10 volt comes back. 100 volt comes bypassing this low pass filter section through the amplifier, through the switching. So if we go low voltage, it disconnects the amplifier, so there's no possible feedback in both ends. 100 volts passes straight through and comes back. Right, to the terminals, that so goes to the terminals, right? All the, basically, all the terminals are wired up in parallel across the boards, and the boards disconnect and reconnect as required. So, this board outputs directly to the terminals. The 1000 volt range comes up here, it's got a modulator thing here, and it's got a low pass filter. The way it works, it uh, uses a 16 kilohertz modulator and stuff like that, it's, it's quite complicated. Then it comes through the filter, and then the 1000 volt comes through here through a step-up transformer and then it's re-rectified back to DC again and here is a polarity switch on a 1000 volt range only and it's another filter and then it comes back onto the main path and carries on right this resistor network here is used for the sensing for the voltage so it can sense its own upper voltage and do corrections back over here right this amplifier error amplifier is called so this will sense what's going on and make corrections at the end. It's a feedback path, so it's a closed loop. But the interesting thing is that the 100 volt is only working on negative voltages, which is weird, say, because it's using the same polarity changeover, in theory, that's on the, the reference board, not on the high voltage sections, because it comes back through. There is no changeover switch on this section, but there's a changeover switch in this section, so you can change over the voltage this way. So it's a bit weird that it, it won't actually go positive. Now, it could be a clue as well. If I'm doing a negative, it will come through, or this will go negative, it won't go positive here. So that means that there's a chance there's an issue with the amplifier section. I need to dig into that a lot more. So, but at least I've got a path to go to. I mean, I know not minus 100 volt works, so the amplifier must be working in some degree. Which diagram shows a polarity switch, and I think it's on the previous page. So this is the precision reference section, and there's the polarity changeover switch here, which is mentioned. Okay, so this is on the output of this position reference because the voltage has come back. And anyway, it's confusing about crosses over and stuff anyway. But it, it comes out of reference, it changes over polarity on the reference ball before it goes through all the other DC stuff. All right, this is before everything else. So, yes, it's confusing. It's taking me a while to try and get my head around it all. We're getting there. So, at least I'm now down. So, I need to look at the 100 volts first. What I suspect is that the 100 volt system is why the 1000 volt isn't working because it, it's the 1000 volts acquired a polarized signal it has to be positive going if the positive going side isn't there then the 1000 volts isn't going to work if i fix the 100 volt positive going side it might also fix the 1000 volt issue uh, that's what i'm hoping so i'm just doing some digging on this high voltage fault with the 100 volt rail and here's a like a block diagram of the power amplifier section which is where i'm looking right now the control voltage comes in comes along this path here which is 100 volt path comes through this relay into the amplifier, back out the amplifier, up this path here, and then out. 
So what I'm actually diagnosing is I want to check the input side and the output side to see if the amplifier is actually working. So I'll start looking closely at this board. So here's the next diagram I was looking at, which is the actual pass of the signals coming in. And you've got some buffering and stuff like that, and some regulators, voltage regulator here, four, minus 400 volts and plus 400 volts come in. So minus down here, plus up here. They come in. These are the off board amplifiers. These are the heat sink modules which are in the back, which are connected via cables from this board. The negative one is obviously working because we're getting negative voltage, but we're not getting positive voltage. So that's this one. And they're interconnected. So they're going, okay, what's the difference between this one and this one? And I'm looking closely at this, and I think I'll, I'll try and find some test points so I can test the input and the output of each one. And I just, there's a fuse right there, just there, there's a fuse which feeds the positive. Anyway, I just tested that fuse, it's open circuit. That fuse is blown. So, does that mean we've got a fault on this board, or we've got something further down here, which isn't quite right? Maybe that diode there is blown. I need to check that as well once I find it. Once right, so there's a fuse, and there's a diode I might have to check next. It's like a 15 volt zener, and so the supply comes through, and there's that fuse there is open. So that's very interesting. The 22k resistor here, um, that's okay. That's not blown, which is a good sign. So that's not been stressed. There's also a 43 somewhere, which I think is from the other side. Is it? There's another big one somewhere. Anyway, I could just replace the fuse and see what happens. That's always risky. It's a fuse will blow for a reason. So I think I'll check for a short on the output of this. So drive positive, drive negative. I'll check for a short across there and I'll see what's going on because if there's a short then I know I've got a problem with this amplifier. Even though I have tested this amplifier, I pulled the thing out and did individual tests on the components here. I didn't find anything wrong, at least nothing obvious. So it could still be a fault which I've missed. I didn't remove any components, I just tested them in place. So maybe there's an issue there, but I didn't find any shorts. So I'm fairly confident it's okay, but not 100%, which is why I'm thinking maybe it could be something like this. So I'm going to um, check this out and we'll see what we get. It's definitely going to be interesting. But yeah, I found a fault. That's good. So I'm going to check these inputs on here and see what's going on.